Let now the savage instincts sleep and all the violence they do. When human love stirs in the deep, the love of God is stirring too. Listen to it again. Let now the savage instincts sleep and all the violence they do. When human love stirs in the deep, the love of God is stirring too. We all ought to remember that Goethe's Faust, that magnificent drama, has as its central nugget the place of love for uh, the place of lust for knowledge and the place of love to balance the soul's disposition. So the power of this meeting with the two lovers cemented for eternity together cannot be overestimated. It reveals to Dante the paralysis love can engender when instead of love leading within the poem to the transcendent mystery, he's headed in Paradiso, guided by Beatrice, it becomes itself a god that in wombs or in shrouds the lover. My sense is that Dante wishes us to feel viscerally the power of love to, par to paralyze and to polarize, to paralyze the lovers in their own appetites as well as to polarize the individual from the deeper love which the early Christian faith called agape, A-G-A-P-E, a Greek word meaning love of the transcendent, accomplished or realized in and through the love of another. Jung observes in volume seven of his collected works <clears throat> in discussing a patient who has a strong urge in her parceled out to a close friend and to her mother. Jung is seeing her as a client and he says, she suffers a violent sentimental demand for love so in passion she feels herself overwhelmed. The demand, he continues, has the character of an overpowering craving, which as we know is blind. This is Jung's language. Something in the soul is still undisciplined, undifferentiated, and yet not yet humanized as part of the libido which still possesses the compulsive character of an instinct, a part still untamed by domestication. Now that's a lot for you to take in, not having it in front of you. So we could spend considerable time exploring how the act of reading can be a seduction, where the subject matter of our reading unleashes erotic energy, as well as the wish to take the story's plot too literally and then succumb to its persuasive powers. Because I don't want to leave tonight with the impression that lust is um, always uh, and exclusively uh, sexual. One can lust after a whole smorgasbord of things, but what it doesn't move away from is arrows. It doesn't move away from arrows, which is not exclusively about sexuality. It's about desire, and you know we can desire more than what is sexual. So I'm going to have to wrap it up here because I want to give time for any of you to comment. And I'm not going to get to it. The, the clock says no. Uh, to move to that next scene where, and I'll just say it to you to end, where he comes on the presence of Beatrice as Virgil fades away as his guide around Canto 31 of Purgatorio, and Dante, like a starry-eyed lover, approaches Beatrice as if he's going to replay 
the story of Paolo and Francesca, and she essentially rhetorically throws cold water on him and says in that wonderful film with, um, come on, help me, with Cher and uh, Nicolas Cage. What? Moonstruck. Where well, she slaps him and says, get over it. Oh, snap out of it, thank you. Oh, you know the film better than I do. I thought I knew it. That's the moment in which Beatrice douses him with a sober moment of, um, we're not picking up the old relationship again. Thank you all. You've been a wonderful audience. Thank you. Yeah, so it's 8.30 and uh, I'm